Terraria by far is my favorite game. Over the years, I've made multiple videos on it. Along with that, I've also played different challenges within it. But there's one challenge that stuck out to me. Can you beat Terraria with nothing? But what exactly do I mean by this? Terraria can't be beat with nothing, right? Well, it depends on what you're going to consider nothing. Would nothing be no world? Or would it mean no items? Or what if it's both? If it is both, how is it possible to beat the game without anything in it? To answer this question, we first need to look at similar questions. As most of you may know, I made a video explaining how you could beat the game in a very limited skyblock map. Not only that, but it is the most limited Terraria map I've managed to find where you can beat the game. But it is far from nothing, as the world contains multiple blocks as you begin. But what about items? Does beating the game with no items mean you do not start with any, or does it mean you cannot use any? The simple solution is not starting with any. And luckily, with this limitation, the world is still beatable. Not only that, but almost any world that is in expert mode can be beat if you start with no items. This is because presents can give you the basic starting items, these being the pickaxe and multiple different weapons. But how exactly are we going to get the presents? Well, on a new world, the guide can help you kill enemies. But what if we're on a very limited skyblock map? Well, like I mentioned in my most limited Terraria skyblock map video, it is possible to get a slime rain to spawn, and with that, it is theoretically possible to have a fallen star hit a slime. However, this only works if there is ground. But because the player falls faster than items, it's impossible to get the loot if a slime is killed above the player. Not only that, but while testing, I never actually got any slimes to spawn. But what do we do if there are no blocks? Well, not starting with items is very different than not starting with blocks. One of the biggest issues for creating the most limited Terraria map is that the player needs somewhere to stand. The player will just fall, die, respawn, and the cycle continues. But the player can't just spawn on any blocks. There need to be some variation of mud. This is so the Plantera Bulb can spawn. And without glitches, you would need at least two blocks. But what if we introduce glitches? There are many glitches within Terraria, but what glitches will help us beat the game with nothing in it? And if we could easily pull off these glitches, how limited could we get the world? Recently, there was a glitch that got pretty popular, allowing people to get to Zenith really quickly. All you needed to do was talk to the guide and get an achievement. You could get any item that the guide was showing you. But how does this help us make the world more limited? Well, it can allow you to start the world with no blocks. Starting a world with two blocks is already quite limiting, but with glitches, you could narrow that down to zero. But you may be wondering, you need to place blocks to beat the game. But how do you place blocks when there are no other blocks around? Well, there are a couple ways of doing this. Those being the ice rod and wiring. But how are we going to obtain either of those? For this to work, we would need one of three NPCs. Those being the wizard, the steampunker, or the mechanic. But due to the world and there being no blocks within it, it is impossible for any of the NPCs to spawn. Except when the world is generated. There are two secret seeds that allow the steampunker to spawn when the world is being generated. Those being Celebration Mark 10 and Get Fixed Boy. But due to the get fixed boys complicated nature, I'm going to leave it out. It might be possible, but for the sake of this video, it's easier if we go with the other option. That being the Celebration Mark 10 world. When this world is generated, there are five NPCs that spawn, three of which are necessary in this case to beat the game. But how is this even possible? Let's first see what the world is like. As you can see, this is the world. Upon loading in, the NPCs and I all just fall. However, like I mentioned before, we can utilize the wiring blocks from the steampunker to place blocks. So all we need to do is just buy a logic gate. But we already run into our first problem. How do we get the two gold coins required to buy the logic gate? We could sell our starting tools, but that doesn't give us nearly enough coins, even if they have the best modifier. So how are we going to get the money? This is where we have to use our first glitch. Upon loading in this world, you get an achievement. Using this achievement and your copper short sword, you can convert it at the zenith while talking to the guide. Although this trick requires you being pretty quick, it is possible to pull off. Now with a zenith, you can sell it for a bunch of gold, thus allowing you to buy the logic gate. But there's also something else you need. You can't stand on the logic gates, meaning you also need blocks. But how am I going to get blocks? When this world is generated, a party automatically starts, meaning the party goal will sell balloon blocks. Although there's one slight problem. You can't actually place blocks onto the logic gates. So does this mean it's not possible? Well, not exactly. Although blocks can't be placed on them, walls can be. And then all we need to do is place the blocks onto the walls. So all we need is logic gates, walls, and blocks. And luckily we have two of the three. But how are we gonna get walls? We can use the same achievement glitch that we used for the zenith to get the walls. But how are we gonna get a second achievement? With nothing in the world, it's pretty hard to get any achievements. Although there are probably more, I know that there are two that we can get. Those being the one from the zenith and reaching the underworld. But due to how quick you need to be to pull the glitch off, it is easier to wait until you fall all the way down to the underworld. So after doing the glitch, you end up with all the three required 
required items, and all we need to do is just place them. So starting with the logic gates, all we need to do is fall and place it anywhere, ideally underneath the player. Then repeat this process for the wall and then the block. And due to the balloon blocks not causing fall damage, you could do this process at any height in the world. However, if you don't have many blocks, I suggest doing it in the underworld. I'm not going to explain why here, but if you want to know more, I suggest you check out my 100 days in the most limited Terraria skyblock map video and skip to two and a half minutes in. But what I have now is essentially the same start that I had in the video I just mentioned. And with this information, I know for a fact it is possible to beat the mechanical bosses in this world. But what about after the mechanical bosses? Plantera and the Golem are impossible to spawn if I don't spawn with certain blocks. But using some specific glitches, I can get those blocks. The mud blocks are the easy part. All you need is a bomb and a balloon block. Then using the glitch with the guide two more times, you can turn those two items into a dirt bomb and a sink. The dirt bombs can give you infinite dirt, and the sink can allow you to convert the dirt into mud. But now with the mud, assuming we can get jungle grass, it means that Plantera is going to be possible. But jungle grass can't be obtained the same way that we are obtaining other items. But there are multiple ways of doing it. The quicker way is by using transmutation. If you don't know what transmutation is, I've linked a video in the description that explains it pretty well. But for those who do know what transmutation is, you're probably wondering how I'm going to do this without any wiring. Well, transmutation can be done without it. I discovered by using this setup, I can get almost any item that I need. The normal way of getting jungle scenes would require killing Skeletron for the Dryad. However, with this, I do not have to do that. Not only that, but I can also get the items I need for spawning Golem. Meaning at this point, I basically have everything I need to beat the game. Not only that, but I can get items that I wouldn't normally have in a world like this. We know the game is beatable if you don't spawn with items or blocks, but what if we don't spawn with both? Well, as you can see, all we do is just fall, but unlike before, we don't have the copper short sword that can give us a zenith. For now, the goal is to get an item, which could give us money, and although most of the NPCs drop items, I don't know if they're possible to obtain, but even if they were, we would have no NPCs to sell them to, so unfortunately, there's no way of getting any items. But some of you may be thinking, the world starts with a party, meaning the particle can give us cake. However, unfortunately, this is not the case. The code that starts a party is not run when the world is generated meaning there is a variable not set to true, so we are not able to get the cake. However, from testing, even if we were able to get the cake, there'd be no way to get enough gold, so no items are obtainable, meaning there is no way to progress. And even if there was a way we could get items that give us enough gold to buy the logic gates, this would require NPCs, and NPCs are not nothing. Beating Terraria with nothing, at least starting with nothing, means we cannot start the game with items, blocks, or NPCs. So how is it possible to beat the game when there is absolutely nothing except for the player in the world? Well, we're going to need to use some pretty interesting tactics. One day, I was scrolling through Veritasium's list of videos. For those who don't know, I like computers. Not just games, but the inner workings as well. And one video stood out to me. Specifically, this one right here. The video explains how it is technically possible for bits to just switch states. And for those who know what I'm talking about, probably know what I'm trying to get at. But for those who don't, radiation can mess with computers by switching random bits. And if specific bits flip, interesting things can happen. At this point, the challenge becomes theoretical. Although it is possible to get bits to flip, it is highly unlikely that it will ever happen. But nonetheless, I will explain how it is possible. But how exactly do bits just flip? The whole point of a computer is that they don't flip, but that doesn't mean they're not prone to flipping. This works because high energy particles can hit a semiconductor within a computer and effectively flip the bit. I don't exactly know how this works because it's pretty complicated, but I can still continue the challenge assuming this will happen. But how am I going to get high energy particles hitting my computer? There's two ways that I've managed to find. Unfortunately, I'm not able to test either methods due to them being extremely dangerous. Those two ways being moving my computer up into space or just loading a bunch of red radioactive matter onto my computer. I shouldn't have to say this, but don't try this at home. I can't try it, and I don't know how you would be able to try it, but nonetheless, it's still pretty dangerous. Now, before I go any further, this topic was discussed by I go by lots of names, where he talks about how you can beat Minecraft without doing anything, which is the exact same thing that I'm doing here, just slightly harder. But hold on, what does bit flipping even do? I can talk about it all I want, but until I actually demonstrate what it does, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, basically, bit flipping can allow values to change within the computer, and if this happens, it can allow things to happen within a game such as damage or health being changed. So essentially, all it's doing is just changing a value. But let's go back to Terraria. What values do we need to change to beat the game? Well, there are probably a multitude of different options, but it basically boils down to what you want to consider beating the game. Is it rolling the credits, or is it killing the Moon Lord? If it is rolling the credits, all we need is three bit flips. Within the main class of Terraria, there is a function called Invasion Type. Assuming we can flip one of the bits, we can then convert this value, which was originally 0, to 1, 2, or 4. And when this happens, the game will think that there was an invasion going on. 
However, because there are no enemies, the invasion is automatically complete. But this just runs the default code for that event, so we would also need to change what event is being complete. And looking at this code, the event that we're looking for has a value of 10. If we can get this parameter of game value ID to be 10, we can then run the credits. And as you can see here, these are the parameters that need to be changed. And after doing the calculations, I found that the value 0, 2, or 3 can be converted into 10 using 2 bit flips. So as you can see after doing that, and updating the game, the credits will start playing. Therefore, we can beat the game with and doing nothing. But there's one slight issue. When the game is complete, the world that you are on gets a golden border. And just running the credits won't do this. But I found that changing one bit can give the golden border. As you can see, this world currently does not have the golden border. But if I go in, change a bit, and leave the world, the game gives this world a golden border. Not only that, but the game thinks that the moonland has been defeated in this world. So with all this, it means the world can be complete with nothing. But I manually changed all the bits, meaning it was not beat while doing nothing. But if we do want to beat it while doing nothing, what do we have to do? Well, we have to do nothing. Like I said before, it is theoretically possible for radiation to flip the bits. But I don't have access to the radioactive materials needed to pull this off. But I do have access to a computer and programming knowledge. And therefore, I could easily make a program that would flip any random bit. But this isn't as straightforward as it seems. When flipping a random bit, it means the bit that was flipped is completely random. Obviously. Meaning if it flips the wrong bit, the game can completely crash. Not only that, but it can corrupt data, making the world completely unplayable. Therefore, even if I could simulate radiation, I wouldn't do it anyways in the fear of losing data. But hold on, what if you consider beating the game, beating the Moon Lord? While you still can't technically beat the Moon Lord, it would just take a lot more time. Instead of flipping a couple bits, you would probably have to flip a whole lot. But either way, the general concept is the same. So we have answered the ultimate question. Is it possible to beat Terraria with nothing? Theoretically, yes. However, it is more likely that the sun explodes before that happens. And without the sun, it is probably even more unlikely that it will happen. So I wouldn't get your hopes up. If you're interested in learning more, there's a link to my Discord server in the description. There's also a link to a different Terraria Discord server, which contains a lot of interesting things such as wiring, glitches, and more. There are also a lot of smart people in that Discord server, who know a lot more about Terraria than I do. But anyways, that's the end of the video, and thanks for watching.